Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, welcome to my backyard. It's a little bit chilly still here in Minnesota, but I wanted to be outside. I just really felt like I wanted to be in the greenery and connected to nature. So hopefully that positive vibrational energy will come right in and you'll be able to feel that as you listen or watch this particular video. Today we're gonna to have a conversation with George Michael. Yes, we have talked with George Michael a few times prior, but let me tell you how this came to be today. Well, I was in the car and I heard a song, a George Michael song, and it wasn't the first time I've heard a George Michael song. I have had um, George Michael songs pop in and out for probably the last week to 10 days. And I pay attention Okay, there's this tool that I work with people in intuitive coaching sessions that is called awareness. It's nothing fabulous. It's a tool that nobody uses that, <laughs> that we don't all use that often, which we should use more. Awareness, so that when you get information and messages over and over again, they repeat, you gotta pay attention. So I followed my own protocol and I'm channeling with George Michael. And the specific thing I wanted to talk with him about is mistakes or how we handle or manage when we you know, make a bad choice or uh, a decision that we maybe have regret for. Like, how do we handle that? Because I know that in his lifetime, as many celebrities do, they've made choices that are not the best so have you and I, but ours aren't like plastered across the tabloids, right? We don't have that. We don't have to deal with that, but they do. So in the public eye making a mistake and how it feels like that whole like failure concept or disappointing people concept. So we're gonna have a conversation about that, okay? Hopefully it'll help you guys too. All right, George, come on in. Yog, yog. <laughs> I just have to call him George. I'm just going to call him George if I can. It's weird because he doesn't feel like George to me. He really just doesn't. Yes, I have my Elvis mug. There we go. Yes, from one of you sent me this a couple of years ago. Just watering it tonight. Nice to see you. He's like, <laughs> he says, thank you for taking my call. <laughs> it's so great. Yeah, um, okay, so I'm gonna tell people how you look, all right? You guys, color is a really big deal to me. It is information, color is its own language. You should pay attention to color too. It's not just your chakras or the energy centers of your body that, that give you information connected to color, but it also could be an archangel. I do a lot of work with angels, and if you work with me in private session, you know that I connect with them by a color as well. So, George, is showing up in kind of this like peachy orange color, a bit of coral, that's what it is, a bit of coral color, um, very vibrant. So that color is connected with our sacral chakra, which is about dreams and desires. And that is most often where we sometimes take our biggest risks and can have our biggest fears revealed to us. Correct, yes, he said, yeah. He's like, you got it. He's like, you're right on. You're right on, Bridget. You're right on tonight, Bridget. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> Good. Good. Give me positive feedback, okay? I could use that. Help me with this channeling stuff, okay, Mr. George Michael? So the conversation that I'd like to have with you, the topic focused on um, regret, decision-making, maybe taking a risk and, and having failure, or maybe doing, just making a really bad choice, like in a moment of what we might consider weakness or whatever it might be, just a, making a bad choice, you know, whether it be relationships or um, in business or in our personal lives, that kind of a thing. I know this is a personal, so he's like, yeah, this is a deeply personal. He literally like, <laughs> You guys, okay, so imagery. I'm clairvoyant, which means I am psychic primarily. Like my first, my heart, clairsentience, empath is the first channel. Let's be, let's be obviously honest about that. But, but my, as, a, as my work goes, it's, it's clairvoyant vision and very, very visual. And so he shows me, he literally un, like unzips like a little hoodie or like a half zip hoodie kind of thing. He literally unzips that and kind of shows me his heart, like vulnerability 
okay? So do you feel that too? Do you feel vulnerable when I talk about mistakes or failures or fear of disappointing other people or risk taking when it comes to your passions, your dreams, your desires? Lots of stuff here, right? It's natural to feel that vulnerability and he's literally showing me that. So first of all, can you share why you feel this topic must be important to you or must be, it's got to have some kind of key relevance, core relevance to date, today, to somebody that's watching and to us as a collective because I, that's not something I'd be just driving along thinking about failures or, you know, making bad decisions. Like, I, I, <laughs> I, have, I haven't been soul searching about regret or anything like that, but all of a sudden that's like this, this topic that you wanted to talk about that came up today. And that's in the song that was on. I wish I remember the song. I don't recall it off the top of my head. But so why is that relevant right now? He says, I think it's um, I think it's always important to to be aware, to know yourself really well. And he says um, to be on your own side. That's the message is to be on your own side. So. Uh, so I'm going to use the word forgiveness to forgive yourself quickly. But he's like, it's really, he's like, it's sad. It's sad that most people, we just don't know ourselves. He says, when you are a person, when you've got a body and you've got all these great, he's saying all these great senses, all these great sensory things, you know, and you have this body and, and most often it seems like we don't realize how great that is until we're sick or until we can't move or until you know we start to age he says it's not until it's taken away or you're forced to, to see how much you really not just need he says not just need your body but how much you you want your body you really want that he's like you really want that i'm gonna say relationship and he says you really want that um, connection. He says link. Interesting. He says you really want that link to your body. And he's saying that's the one place I think most people can relate to being the most abusive. He says, oh, that's a good word. Oh, that's a heavy word. Abusive to yourself is regards to your body. It's never quite enough. It never quite meets the standards, doesn't it? Whether it's for someone like an image, for someone like he's saying, He's giving me the feeling of like picture perfect or picture ready, like magazines or, you know, um, interviews, like having to have certain makeup on, having to look a certain way. And he's saying sun kissed, like to have to have tan. He's like saying to be um, to look healthy, like all this makeup and all there's so he says there's so much effort that's presented into the image of the body. Uh, and, and it creates he says it. it, it fosters a disconnect he doesn't say disconnect but it foster fosters this severing of a link between your body and he says the beauty of your mortality the beauty of your mortality that's that is gorgeous the beauty of your mortality george michael from the afterlife and that the imagery it's 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 this illusion of perfection that is completely unattainable it's it's not even something that is even even possible really and but we we try we still try and we still hold people accountable for this completely unattainable um he says stature not status but stature and and he's talking about the body the physical human body interesting Interesting. Okay. So when we're talking about regret or making bad choices and things of that nature, and you're talking about kind of this illusion or these unrealistic, what I'm hearing you say is these unrealistic, and I'm feeling this. It's interesting because I feel it into, I, I hear it into, like intellectually, I, I hear the information, I have the knowledge, wisdom from the conversation of what he's trying to get across the point, but I feel this the point is about the connection or lack of and the body is the key it is the common place that we abuse by setting 
we abuse ourselves, we sabotage, I'm gonna say sabotage, he says abuse ourselves by creating a completely unrealistic goal or a completely ideal, unrealistic, like the, there's like this picture of what it should be and it's never that. And he said it can never be that, it never is that because usually it's, it's the opposite, like I want my hair straight if it's curly or I need to be fair skinned if I'm, I'm tan. And for me, it's like the opposite. I mean, I wish I had golden, beautiful golden brown skin. And so it's always kind of like that old kind of thing where you want what you don't have kind of thing. But he says it's much more serious than that. It's much deeper, it's much deeper. He says, we sever, we start to sever our, uh, and it looks like a rope that's like being cut little strand by strand by strand by strand by strand, like a rope that's all tied, twi twi um, twined up, tied up, and then it strand by strand by strand slowly cut this, um, where we're, we are belittling our, or devaluing, thank you, that's a better word, devaluing our relationship with this beautiful, pristine body that we have. And there's not, it's not even about acceptance of it, it's about an appreciation, he says, a respect for the body. And there isn't that, there isn't that. And he says, much a bad decision could be averted if we simply thought of the body and its effect on the body and how we we want what we want from our human experience then we wouldn't have he said this desperation to escape the reality that we're in or the pressures that we put upon ourselves that are completely unrealistic he says they're just unattainable and um i think he says i think it's important to say these things especially now because the link to the human body is extremely critical at this time you must be in your, in your body and embracing the the vibrancy, the vibrant energy. He says vitality, the vitality of your body is so essential right now. And the more you can believe in that 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 partnership between your body and and your your mind and your soul and 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 your 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 emotion and and not to make it evil or or speak of it negatively or even blame it he says it's 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 something that is he says I, I i understand that this is a deeper conversation than perhaps what you expected in talking about behavior he says mistakes but it truly is it's, it's a setting yourself he says it's like setting yourself up for failure and it's the fear of not achieving something that's not achievable so you're setting yourself up to not to, to fail, to be disappointed. And if that's the case and you and it's a pattern that you do over and over and over again, you're going to develop a distrustful relationship, a disrespectful relationship with yourself. He says, with yourself. And your body then will keep, and he, it's interesting because he keeps saying the body will keep the score, the body will keep the score. And I think that's actually a book, the body keeps the score. I think that's actually a book, you guys. You guys, I think that's a book. Has anyone read it? The Body Keeps the Score or something like that. Um, it's about trauma. I just, it's about trauma. He's saying um, the body really shows up for you over and over and over and over again. Yeah, it's not perfect. Yeah, sometimes it, it, it your stomach feels sore. Sometimes it doesn't perform the way you want. Sometimes it can't run the way you want it to run. Sometimes it doesn't look the way you want it to look. And yet, thinking about it is punishing the body for no reason. There's no, there's not a good reason. He says, you can't abuse yourself into conforming, into forcing change. Change, he says, is very, it's this natural process. It's gotta come from inspiration, from, from the desire to change, not, not the, the um, and he says self-punishment, and I wanna say bullying, the, the bullying of the thoughts about the body and that kind of thing. And he's saying, this isn't about just image. I wanna be really clear, he says, I wanna be really clear, you guys, I wanna be clear. He says, this isn't just about body image, like weight or height or um, your skin or the, the, the way you wear your hair, the color of your eyes, anything like that. It's not, it's, while those things are all very much a part of our of our construct and our identities 
he's like, that's not what, that's just one common, that's a really common place to start with this conversation, this topic. Um, he says, it's like the mind does its own thing, but the body doesn't always cooperate. And it's not, and he says, it's not because the body is stupid. The body, your body is brilliant. He says, your body is brilliant and it is so beautiful. It is so, if you had any idea how envious those of us here, he says here, which is like the afterlife, like these, he literally shows me like bubbles, like big bubbles, like floating with like a, a <laughs> with a person's face in it, like, our bubbles of light, our, our spirits. He's like showing me those spirits. He's, there, he's being funny. It's like cartoon-like and really happy, like, la, la, la. He said, if you only knew how much body envy we had from over here, he said, because there's so much, you guys, there's so much sensory things that you miss just being a spirit. But when you're in the body, you have everything, access to everything. He's like, do you not realize that there's no failure? There's only experience. It's, it's the, the human life is about experimenting and trying things. So naturally, when you try something, you don't always like everything you try and you don't always do the right thing the first time and you don't always learn from the first time you try something. He's like, think about it like if you do a sport kind of a thing, like I see like riding a bike or skiing or he's like, showing, I don't know, I don't know why he's showing me like water polo or something in the water where they're throwing a ball. I have no idea does not register with me but that's what he's showing me like the pool playing around in the pool kind of thing swimming and all that right um but he, like water polo it's like a sport something in the water anyway i don't know what it is but whatever um okay mm -hmm. body energy now i'm stopped because i keep saying I literally, okay, mm -hmm. like they have this, um, they're like, there's like, and there's really not an envy, I should say that, you guys. Spirit doesn't envy the human body, but he's trying to portray using these words that inspire emotional response, and the mind cannot uh, ignore the emotional response of the idea of the concept of envious of the body. And he's like, the body provides all the opportunities that you could possibly want because you have access to your spirit, you have access to your heart and emotion, which is what creates your relationships, he says. He's showing me the emotions are key to relationship and that's what you want is, and he says the links, but I say connection, okay, with other people. That's, it's relationships, that's the thing, right? It's energy, okay. Um, and then the mind. So the body, mind, the heart, and the soul. Like you only have access to all those things when you're in a body, he says. When you're just spirit, you don't have the body. And he says, emotions aren't the same thing. Through energy, we can translate our information into what would be emotional for you to understand because we have experience, he's saying, afterlife spirits, we have experienced that. And it's relatable then to you understanding that type of energy, the vibration that I'm conveying, he says, that I'm sharing with Bridget, for example, that I'm sharing with Bridget. You can feel that. If you let yourself, you can. So that's what the body, it's like, so um, mistakes or regrets, and it kind of feels like he's falling into the form of, okay, so let's talk about judgment. Can we talk about that? It really feels like the brain is like um, the one that tends to be the one that evaluates things, that chooses good or bad or that kind of a thing. But the body doesn't do that. It's like not a willing participant in that. No, he says, no, the body will not betray you. It always tells you the truth. He says, your body will always tell you the truth. The body is quite intuitive. The body is the most psychic part of you. Your body is your most psychic organ is what he says. Interesting. I didn't know that. So when you are assessing risk or you're feeling the fear of something, a pending decision, a pending choice, he says a pending decision. He says, it's not by impulsive impulsiveness that you make the choice. If it is, it's simply a triggered response, which is based on a fear, which will lead to disappointment. Fear and disappointment, he says, are very close allies. Fear and disappointment, very close allies. Very close allies. Interesting. So impulsiveness, that's different than like inspired, right? Like having an idea and I'm like, oh, I want to do that. He says, and I'm really bad at this. I'm guilty of this myself. So if I had like regrets, it'd be like, oh, I'm like, oh, I have this great idea and I just go with it. And it's like, oh, wait a minute. I have lots of great ideas. Not all of them are gonna float and I can't do all of my great ideas. <laughs> so I need some, 
step back time to kind of use my discernment to see which ideas stayed lit, like sparked of light. That's kind of how it is, right? So what's the difference between being impulsive and like just like doing something quickly and, and maybe having regretting that like it's not a, the best choice versus being like inspired like how do we know the difference between like an intuitive kind of impulse versus just a like a um i gotta do this now quick before i lose my courage to do it or i i forget or whatever whatever the motivation is what's the difference between the impulsivity piece the impulsiveness like a reaction and an intuition, like an inspiration. What's the difference? It says you can feel it. You can feel the difference, can't you? The inspiration feels like, woo, he says, it kind of buoys you up. Like it literally, like the inspiration comes literally like you guys from that like sacral chakra and the hips and the pelvis, like root chakra, all up into the body. Like it comes, he says, comes from the earth, kind of the earth, he says, close to the earth, up like really inside you, it's really inside you. It comes up and it just kind of moves into you and it just feels like this force, this energy force. Um, it might feel like light, it might feel like movement, flow. It doesn't feel um, sick or motion sick or, or intent, like scary or fear-based. He says, that's, that's an inspiration, that's an inspirational kind of movement that is inspiring some kind of action, he says. It's not an outcome, really clear, he says. It's an action, different. Action comes before the outcome. That's what he's showing me. Brilliant. <laughs> now that, my friend, that is brilliant. High five on that. <laughs> Literally, let's high five. Can you do it? Oh, my God. Okay, let me put my hand closer here. High five. <laughs> oh, my gosh, you guys. Close your eyes. High five. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Try this experiment. Hello, sensory. You have a body. You have energy. You have a soul. Feel this. Just high five George Michael right now. Just do it. I'm not kidding. Come on, humor me. Just try it. Close your eyes. Take a breath. Let George Michael high five you. Oh my gosh, do you feel that on your hand? Oh my gosh. I'm a little chilly, so I have the chills, but that's just because of the weather. But oh my gosh, I literally feel this big warmth energy right here. The center of the hand, the palm of the hand right here. High five to you too, my friends. High five. <laughs> oh my gosh that was awesome hey thanks for that thanks for that moment to um teach to give an opportunity for empath to empath energy to energy to connect love that <laughs> that's awesome thank you for that that was really good so the impulsive piece then tell us about that how is that and i know to me it's like a reaction just like a reacting or a response and and it he says, oh, this is interesting, it feels like fire, like something's on fire and you have to quick put it out, put it out, put it out. So you have to get it out of you. He says, that's what the impulsive piece is. When you're making a decision, it's based on impulse. It's often, he says, it's, it's a fear of being burned, um, holding on too long, um, like a lack of, of confidence in, in your own ability to cultivate it or to hold this beautiful idea or gift. Usually it's something that's hot that's going to burn you and you have to get rid of it right away. So that isn't the, it's not about timing to make decision, he says. What is it about then? He said it's not the circumstance, it's the circumstance. The circumstance is triggering you. And he says, don't run don't run he says what you can do is you ground deeper into your body go deeper into like he's like showing that root chakra which is at the base of your tailbone like imagine if you were if we were sitting right now on the grass behind me uh, butt on the grass cross-legged the very base of your spine where that kundalini energy comes up through the earth right at the base of the tailbone uh, right into the body he's like just instead of trying to get it out go down with it. He's like, go down into the earth with it. Like put your hands on the ground. Imagine your, your sits bones, your butt on the ground and just connect to the earth. And he's like, go down with it. And then let that energy then reformulate, recalibrate in a way he says that is, that allows and supports an inspired, inspired understanding of what the point of that impulse was what was the point of that and he says most often most commonly it's a way to understand and know yourself better and it's about building trust within yourself oh my gosh this is brilliant this is so good building trust within your i'm gonna need to listen back to this because this is fa this is really fabulous this is really fabulous and i don't know if i'm going to remember the next time i feel all impulsive like oh my gosh and i want to vent or freak out or 
be like, how dare that person? Oh my goodness, you know, or just be like, oh, really? Again, kind of a thing. And I just want to go, oh, impulsive, you know? He's like, just go down, go down with it. Go down into the earth. Just really connect, root yourself in. He's like, and, and let that go in, go down and in, down and in. Not in you, not out of you quick, but down into the earth. He says, and, and let it be like kindling, you know, like the fire idea of the fire. Let it kindle and, and, and be fuel and resourced for, for the best decisions, the, the next insights, the next inspirations that will come through you, inevitably come through you. But it's building a trusting relationship with yourself where you trust yourself not to face things like, oh, I can do it, I'm going to face things, but to be super centered and know who you are, he says, and know who you're not. Don't let reaction rule you and, and become this like distraction to you that derails your relationship with yourself. And I know because I've been in those places. And he says, those are dark places. Those are dark places. And you don't want to be there. You don't want to be there. Whew, okay, it's just too chilly for me out here, you guys. It is just too, too chilly. And we've been chatting for a while. So with Mr. George Michael, thank you so much for your time tonight. This was a kind of a deep subject, but there was a lot of insights in this video, don't you guys think? Go ahead and write in the comments below what really stood out to you. I mean, are you going to watch this again? Yeah, I'm totally going to watch to this. I know it sounds weird when I say that, but it's true. I have to because I can't. I'm having the experience and I'm feeling the energy and I... I want to receive it just like you do as a viewer, you know, so I'll watch it back. I do, uh, very often I do that. So thank you so much, Mr. George Michael Yogg, for being here and having this interesting conversation with us. I, I really do appreciate it, and I know the viewers here on Above Life Channel will appreciate it as well. And if you've liked this channeling session or you're a big fan of George Michael, go ahead and check out the playlist for George Michael, or if George isn't really your fave, no offense, George, Go ahead and check out the other playlists. Lots of great celebrity insights from the afterlife you can find here at Above Life Channel on the playlist. I hope that today we've inspired your spirit and filled you with hope. Before you leave, be sure you subscribe to Above Life Channel so you never miss one of the new channeling videos. Most often shared weekly, I also have a podcast that is shared on Sundays, Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. Make sure you catch that as well for inspirational insights on intuitive topics. Thanks so much for being here. Have a great day.